What if everything you think is real, space, time, even you, is just the cosmic equivalent of a desktop icon? Clickable, yet not revealing what lies beneath. Welcome to Donald Hoffman's trip. A crumbling universe, space-time as illusion. Cognitive scientist Donald Hoffman's startling claim that space-time is not fundamental represents potential conceptual demolition of the modern scientific worldview and to our dominant ways of thinking about minds and consciousness. In his recent conversation on the Lex Friedman podcast, he outlines a synthesis of insights from quantum field theory, general relativity, and evolutionary theory that points to a sobering possibility. The structure we take as the bedrock of reality is more akin to a user interface than a window into ontological truth. Yet his claim isn't isolated within fringe theory. It's echoed by leading physicists like Nima Akani Hamed, Ed Witten, and David Gross, who argue that space-time, as described by Einstein and extended through quantum field theory, is no longer a tenable way of thinking about the basic structure of the universe. In Hoffman's words, space-time is doomed. For those engaging with this idea of what I call integrated intelligence, consciousness as a non-local extended phenomenon, this represents an extraordinary invitation. If space and time themselves are not emergent or illusory, the standard objections to non-locality in conscious experience begin to dissolve. Concepts like mind-to-mind -mind connections, precognition, intuitive knowing, once regarded as pseudoscience, gain a new interpreted plausibility within a space-time paradigm. And I get to sue my psychiatrist. Evolution and shadow, the interface theory of perception. Hoffman argues that evolution by natural selection did not shape our perceptual systems to reveal reality, but to hide it. His interface theory of perception draws an analogy with computer desktops. The folder icon you click isn't a representation of the machine's physical reality. It's an efficient abstraction that hides circuit boards and silicon. In the same way, our human perceptions are survival-driven hacks. What we see is not the real world, but an evolutionary interface optimized for adaptive behavior, not for truth, and certainly not for perceiving the fundamental nature of reality. This view is not merely philosophical. It's underpinned within mathematically modeled simulations of evolutionary processes. These simulations show that truth-seeking perceptual systems are consistently outcompeted by utility-maximizing ones. From this emerges a radical implication. What we perceive, including space, Time and physical objects might have little or no resemblance to the underlying structures of reality. This profoundly disrupts materialist assumptions about consciousness. That means just about everything that you learned in science class is inadequate as a totalizing explanatory model of life and cosmos, or even deeply misleading. With the possible exception of the stuff that nutty replacement teacher once said when ranting about quantum physics. If our entire sensorium is a virtual dashboard, then so too might be our sense of self, our experience of localization in space and time, and our very separation from others, and from the cosmos itself. Integrated intelligence, which I see as a form of cognition or awareness that's not bound by the physical brain or traditional space-time constraints, could be a glimpse not into delusion, but into a deeper cosmological structure. The third realm, beyond quantum field theory and natural selection. One of the most profound implications of Hoffman's discussion is the assertion that both quantum field theory and evolution by natural selection may be provisional frameworks, both mere interfaces in their own right. That nutty replacement teacher may actually not have been nutty enough. Just as Newtonian physics gave way to Einstein's relativity and quantum mechanics, so too might these dominant theories yield to a more fundamental third realm. Here, Hoffman introduces structures like the amplitudehedron and cosmological polytope, mathematical constructs that enable physicists to calculate scattering amplitudes without reference to space-time. These geometries compress what would otherwise be billions of Feynman diagram terms into elegant single equations. Hoffman suggests that they reveal a deeper symmetry, dual conformal symmetry, that remains invisible within space-time itself. And hey, who am I to question him? I'm not a physicist, 
bootstrap. Pardon the pun. If it wasn't for AI, I'd be washing dishes in my spare time. But I do digress. If such underlying symmetries are real, then perhaps what we call the laws of physics are merely the surface behaviour of an unobservable realm of pure relations, topologies, or even consciousness itself. It's here, in this admittedly speculative terrain, that integrated intelligence might find its scientific traction. Not as a ghost in the machine, but as a native phenomenon of an underlying informational or mathematical substrate. Integrated intelligence as post-space-time phenomenon. Integrated intelligence, as I've defined it in my work, involves the human capacity to access information and insight beyond conventional cognition through intuition, foresight, inner knowing, and transpersonal awareness. These faculties have been marginalized in mainstream Western science for well over a century precisely because they defy the assumed constraints of space, time, and causality as traditionally conceived. But if these constraints are illusions, if, as Hoffman puts it, space time has had a good run but it's over, then the most adamant dismissals of integrated intelligence begin to lose their bite. The assumption that consciousness must be brain bound becomes a case of mistaking the image for the thing. Integrated intelligence may operate from or interface with a deeper realm underlying our user interface. For example, Phenomena such as precognition and presentience, information from a future that may not exist linearly, telepathy, mind-to-mind -mind communication that bypasses classical signal transmission, clairvoyance, mind-to-object perception of distant or non-local events, and synchronicity, meaningful coincidences less bounded by causality. All these could be reframed as cognitive resonances within this deeper informational domain. I've long stated that these are not paranormal things, but postnormal, phenomena that do make sense once the unexamined boundaries of space-time are pried apart. Philosophical and scientific echoes. Hoffman's claims resonate with several historical and contemporary thinkers. David Bohm's implicate order theory posits that space-time is the explicate layer of a deeper, enfolded reality. John Wheeler's it from bit idea suggests that information, not matter, is the foundation of reality. Roger Penrose and Stuart Hamerov's orc or theory attempts to root consciousness in quantum processes within microtubules, brushing the edges of non-locality. Henry Stapp, a physicist, has openly explored quantum mind hypotheses that place consciousness in active dialogue with quantum fields. What all these share, besides the willingness of their proponents to risk their reputations to push the boundaries of science, is a dissatisfaction with a purely mechanistic space-time bound ontology and a willingness to entertain that consciousness may play a foundational, not emergent, role in reality. The constraint of projective coherence. Importantly, Hoffman does not suggest throwing out all of physics or biology. He insists that any new theory beyond space-time must project coherently back into space-time. That is, it must explain what we already know in these domains or extend them. This constraint anchors speculative models to empirical accountability. It's a sober reminder that while we may look beyond, we must also reconcile with what we know, or at least explain it better. For integrated intelligence, the possibility of some kind of implicate order serves as a powerful principle. The phenomena integrated intelligence points to, intuitions, synchronicities, so-called psi events, must be capable of integration within what we already understand about brains, behavior, and physical systems. But it also opens a vast space of interpretive freedom. If space-time itself is a high-level projection of something deeper, then consciousness may be not a passenger in the system, but an interface to the deeper source itself. What does that mean for all those folk invoking quantum physics as an explanatory mechanism for psi experiences, including Penrose, Hameroff, Stapp, and Irvin Laszlo? Don't ask me, I just work it. But don't forget to leave your own brilliant, or feeble, pontifications upon these matters in the comments section. I'd love to read them, or not. 
but I will read them. Speculations toward a conscious universe. So, what might be beyond all this? If Hoffman's analogy holds, then what we see as particles, fields, brains, and bad hair days are mere icons, compressed symbols floating in the user interface. The reality beyond these may be a network of conscious agents, mathematical relations, or even non-dual awareness itself, or God itself. In this view, consciousness does not simply emerge from matter. Rather, matter emerges as an interface phenomenon from a network of consciousness, or proto-conscious agents, as Hoffman proposes in some of his more speculative work. This aligns in spirit with panpsychist views, but reframes the ontology entirely. Instead of everything as consciousness, it might be more accurate to say everything we experience is what consciousness looks like through a user interface. This suggests a cosmology where the universe is not a machine, but an evolving entity. Consciousness is not epiphenomenal, but fundamental. Integrated intelligence is not a woo-woo notion, that term beloved by skeptics, but a plausible emergent faculty of consciousness engaging a deeper than space-time reality. Of course, I could be wrong in all that. Nonetheless, such a vision could provide a scientifically informed basis for the mystical, so-called psychic and intuitive capacities which have long been reported across cultures and centuries. A cosmology where inner experience is not a glitch in the matrix, but a glimpse into it. Final reflections. Implications for the other singularity. In my upcoming book, The Other Singularity, which I'm currently writing, this line of argument provides a bridge between physics and metaphysics, between computation and intuition. Hoffman's dismantling of space-time offers scientific scaffolding for a broader philosophical argument that we're approaching a new singularity, not merely one of artificial superintelligence, but of universal integrated intelligence. This singularity will not arrive through exponential increases in computing power alone, but through a reconceptualization of consciousness, intelligence, and reality itself. It will require abandoning reductionism as the sole epistemic frame and instead embracing a pluralistic ontology in which the non-local, the intuitive, and the transpersonal are no longer excluded from serious discourse. In this possible future, the mind is not merely a byproduct of neural computation, but a participant in a deeper informational order. And what I call integrated intelligence may be the first faint signal of a new operating system preparing to overwrite our hopelessly outdated space-time bound paradigm. I'm Marcus T. Anthony. See you again soon in the futures. Hello, Marcus T. Anthony here. If you're interested in the kinds of ideas you've encountered here, you'll love my new online power and presence course. The course purpose is to enable you to establish your unique, authentic self, what I call your deep self, and to live a life that truly reflects your highest potential, not what somebody else has told you what you should be. Each session has a specially designed meditation to help you embody your deep soul. In the Power and Presence online course, you'll learn how to stand in the power of your deep soul, how to develop embodied presence, making it impossible for others to distract you from your desired future, how to intuitively set your most important life goals and develop the wise actions to achieve them, how to develop digital wisdom the unshakable capacity to know yourself deeply and master our minds in the age of AI. The Power and Presence course is available right now. Links are in the description. See you there.